Hey everyone, Karant here, welcoming you back to Swicked in 5. In the last episode, we infiltrated Dorot, found Alenia with the Twilight Rune, defeated her, then ended up having to fight Miyakis, our friend and companion. We defeated her in a duel, and then escaped Dorot with hide unscathed, essentially. Although the Twilight Rune kind of went weird, and we couldn't get it because Dolph ran off with Alenia, so oh well. Anyway. Then we discovered at the end of the episode that Queen Limslia, slash the princess, is going into battle herself to ostensibly end the war. In this episode, we're going to do none of that. <laughs> we are going to do all the side questy stuff before we get to what's coming up, which obviously, if Limslia herself is going into battle, then you can expect the next episode after this is going to be big. So yeah, this is Dorat. I'm here because we didn't raid Dorat when I went through last time, and I want to raid Dorat, so let's raid Dorat. I will also mention, I'm not going to do it on camera, but you can get a Doremi elf south of Dorat if, if you want, uh, if you want to go after that sort of thing. That'll make four out of the five, so we'll be almost done with that, but I'm not really going to do it just yet, so please let me in Dorat, these big gigantic freaking doors. And we come to the city proper. Well, for, for the most part, at least. Now, let's see. What is over here? I forget precisely. This city's a little... I guess the best way I can think to put it... Oh, okay. I need to go this way first. The best way I can think to put it is... The guy that I... Whose walkthrough I use for a lot of information on this game, uh, 29 Rooks, is of the opinion that this game essentially was unfinished at the time of being published. And one of the things he cites is that as you get a little later in the game, places start to get emptier, a little bit less busy, and there's just not as much content. And I tend to agree with him, especially in the case of Dora. There's just not much here, really. It's a lot of castle and a lot of spaces, but that's really about it. Alright, so we get the quad tactic, which, if I remember correctly, is a, just a tactic for four people, so it's not going to show up on the screen, per se. Yeah, quad lightning, okay. So, again, not really a formation I'm terribly interested in using because that means just four people in the party, which is bad. All right, let's see. Let me get the directions here. Okay, sorry. Um, I'm looking at the directions from a little bit earlier because I want to try to get all the treasure. Let's see. I believe there's a treasure around. Make sure. I don't remember precisely. Okay, let's see head to... Okay, no, I guess I just need to go through here. Okay. Yeah, I needed to go to this big giant grass triangle here. And then... Let's see. Okay, it's really hard, almost impossible to spot any treasure that's around here in these crevices. Let's see. Actually, I think it might not be here. I think I might need to keep going this way. Anyway, let's talk to you. Uh, it's just like Godwin to manipulate your highness and the lovely lady Miyakis into fighting each other. Well, yeah, I mean, it definitely is just like Godwin, but that's no real surprise by this point. Alright, yeah, this was the path that I was supposed to go through. Okay, sorry, my directions were a tad ambiguous, but go ahead and grab that. Those are the two treasures on this bottom southeastern portion here, the window set and the quad tactic. I'm actually going to jump back to the northern portion, essentially where we invaded, because there are four treasures that we can find. Let's see. Okay, yeah, there's four treasures that we can find there. So I'll see you guys back over at the northern portion. Okay, here in the northern portion of town, you notice we actually have shops and places to go. Although, there really isn't much need for a bar, I don't think, but... Heh. Heh 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 Ah, yeah. Go ahead and kiss my butt. Uh, but yeah, we got shops here, places we can go, we can pick stuff up. Let's see if there's anything that's actually worth getting here. Rare finds? Flame Array Chain. That's pretty good. But you notice we don't have the money for it, so no buying it for us. But at least seeing it in shop, it should pop up here now. Okay, let's see. Uh, well, not really anything worth buying armor-wise, particularly. 
not overly much. Oh well. Anyway, at least we've seen it, so it'll be available for us when we go back to HQ. Okay, let's see. Let me go. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's go this way. Sorry, just trying to see where all my treasure is. There should be a treasure. I believe it's right around down. Here. Yeah. Here we go. The crane wing tactic, which is a tactic we can actually use by not having to lose any part of our party members. Crane Wing is... Oh, I mean, it kind of reminds me of the move in Karate Kid, essentially. Plus 10 accuracy, technique, and speed, which is pretty good. But you notice the biggest issue with this is it leaves everybody in your formation wide open. You don't have any of your front-end fighters protecting anybody else, so I'm not going to use that formation. But it's still good to have, anyway, just in case. Alright, so that's that. I have to check and see while we're running around here to see if there's an item shop. Just to see if we can get any you know, fishies, any farm crops, or anything of that ilk up here. Okay. Oh, here we go. Here's our item shop, standing out in the middle of the street. Alright, anything special? No, nothing special, although you can buy eyeball rings, so yay, but we've had enough of those. Alright, so we got two treasures up here, and somebody hiding, apparently. Uh, was that somebody hiding? Oh, it's a dog. Okay, never mind. Palegate piece, and a Pale Moon cask. Palegate piece, obviously, is part of the Palegate rune. Pale Moon cask, on the other hand, is a healing item, I believe. Uh, no, it's a piece of armor. Yes, it's a healing item. Go me! I guess I saw Cask and was thinking probably Poe and the Cask of Amontillado, although I think it's a slightly different Cask. Okay, I can give that to Phelan. Uh, I'm not going to, though, because I don't really see her being in my forces too terribly long, but still, it's a nice thing to have anyway. Let's see. Okay, and I realized, actually, I missed an item going to the east, so let's go back down here. My bad. And that'll be everything, effectively, that we'll pick up, because... We got all the stuff in the castle itself, because I wanted to go ahead and make sure we got those. Alright, let's make sure... Yeah, there you are. Okay, that's a flame ring. Alright, so, that's everything out of here, out of Dorot. All the items we can get, and the shops we can go to and such. So now I want to do a couple of bits of extra recruiting before we go on to the next big event. So where we need to go is a place we've actually been before, and to a couple of people we've talked to before there, so I will see you guys over at the big hole. Well, hello again, my old friends. Hmm, why are you pestering me again? By the way, I sensed a strong magical signal to the west. Could it be? The Twilight Rune? And the Star Rune, perhaps? Have you some connection to those runes as well? Wait, you need not answer. This calls for immediate action. Bergen, stop your damn digging already! Huh? But why, Master? What about the magic? I want to see more magic! Quit your whining! It's embarrassing! If we follow this young man, there will be much greater magic to see. You're kidding! Will it be as crazy as your magic? I'm there! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! It appears that the scope of my studies will broaden just by sticking with you. I'll give you the honor of being called my friend. It's a very generous gesture, I think. Well, I will take it. So, we have Levi and Bergen as Stars of Destiny. Now please, lead the way. Well... I actually am going to go ahead and put Levi in the party. Now, you notice, I've got Cornelio there because I made an aborted attempt to try to get that fourth Doremi rune, elf. And it didn't work, so yeah, I'm kicking him out now. Uh, Bergen, you can actually, yeah, you can, you can go to the castle too. Oh, I have to add Bergen. Well, fiddlesticks. Okay, you're going the entourage then. Fine. Alright, so, a quick word about first Bergen, because Bergen's not very good. Bergen is awful. Bergen has basically no magic defense 
and access to zero, yes, zero epic skills. None of them. Not a single stinking one. Bad. But he does have some good to him, and that is his treasure hunt skill goes all the way up to double S. So that puts him in the category of your Swikes and Lorelei's and your Babbage's primarily in regards to if you want to take them with you on treasure hunting parties, he's good for that, but otherwise he is very, very awful. Levi, on the other hand, oh, <laughs> Levi is our magic sage. He will be the person that we go to to raise our magic skills up. D, C, B, A, all that stuff. So first off, how a freaking Luya. We can now access magic epic skills because he'll train us up to the level to learn magic epic skills. Secondly, Levi's a really, really good mage. He is on the level of Zarase and Jean and Vicky. He doesn't quite deal the uber damage, I think, that they do precisely. But his elemental affinities are insanely good, which means you can give him basically any magical rune you want, and he's kosher. He's really, really good. So, yeah. Bergen, meh, except treasure hunt. Levi, ho oh, ho ho, baby. Alright, next up, we actually need to keep Levi in the party for good reason. If you want, you can dump Bergen, but we're... I don't think I'm going to do that just yet. But definitely keep Levi in the party because he will actually help us recruit our next couple of folks whom we will find in Raft Fleet. Huh? I sense powerful magic. It's emanating from that cat. He's not a cat. He's a leopard. Semantics, dear girl. Anyway, the cat appears to be bearing a mysterious rune. What? You can tell? Wait, are you the amazing wizard I've been searching for? Wait, why does... Ugh, where does everyone keep getting that? I keep telling people I'm a rune magic scholar, not a wizard. So it is you! Please, can you help Ernst? Ernst! Incredible. I'm sorry if I've given you a shock. As you can see, I'm actually human. But ever since the day I bore that rune, I've been like this. Huh, it must be a property of the beast rune, but I've never seen this type of rune before. To change form entirely. Remarkable! Where did you find such a rare artifact? It's all my fault! It's my fault you were taken over by the rune! No, I keep telling you not to blame yourself. But... Grr. Ernst? Ugh, ugh! And he's back to being Mr. Leopard. He can only turn back into a human for a short time, as you see. Fascinating. I must have that rune. What? Don't tell me you're refusing. You have some objection? Well... Now is no time to be stingy. No, that's not it. We don't even want the rune. We've been trying to get rid of it. The whole problem is we can't even take it off in the first place. We asked the rune master to remove it, but he said it was being held on by magic and that we need the help of a wizard. Why else would we be looking for an amazingly strong wizard? If you can get it off, then please keep it! Huh, very well. Well, that certainly simplifies matters. I'll remove this rune, making it my own. Really? However, it can't be done immediately. I'll have to conduct some research first. Research? You're not gonna hurt him, are you? Are you even listening? 
How can I hurt him by doing research? Well... Okay, please help us! Prince Friador, please take these two to Aurora Sindaria Castle. <laughs> I love it. Since when are you in charge? But nah, we will. Thanks, this means so much to us. I'm sorry for the hassle, but I know there must be some way we can help you too, Your Highness. So, Ernst and Norma are now stars of destiny. Should we follow you then? Actually, no, just go to the castle. Okay, thank you. Let's go, Ernst. Alright, so let's go ahead and talk about Norma and Ernst. Norma is a short-range fighter mage, so kind of a short Kyle to some degree. Although, she doesn't have as good a stats as he does. She starts at level 10, just like Gavaya does, so ultimately the question is, just as with Gavaya, is it worth putting in the time? Now, with the patented Suikoden leveling up system, it's not as much time as you might think, but it is worth thinking about. If you do level her up, she does actually have some very well-rounded stats all in all, with pretty decent tech and agility, so she's a basically carbon, not really carbon copy, but she's kind of a poor copy of Richard in that sense. So she can, she's got some pretty good flexibility to her, although not quite on the highest levels. One thing that definitely is worth mentioning with, Nor with Norma, though, is her Podge Finder goes up to double S, which is higher than Egbert's. Now, ideally what you might want to do is take her with you, or take them both, because keep in mind, those skills all stack. Those stack together, those stack with Prosperity Rune stuff, those stack with Thief skills that we can use with Roy, and another character we'll recruit in just a second. So, all in all, go for it. Treasure hunting, money making, she's pretty good for that. Ernst is kind of weird. I mean, the fact that he can turn into a human and a leopard, well, pretty well says it, but his beast rune is unique. Now, in his regular form, his normal form, he is a monster, with all the problems with monsters there unto pertaining. But if you use level one of his beast rune, he becomes a human, and it opens up the rest of his other spells, which have the potential to be quite overpowered. I've actually not used Ernst very much. I may need to, I think, just to kind of get a sense for what he is and get a sense for using him. So, yeah, I mean, really, it's a question of, I guess, with both Norma and Ernst, potential, essentially. In regards to army battles, both of them give you two recovers, and Ernst gives you an extra speed boost. So if you put him in the party, your party will go a lot faster, which is great for, say, your ballista unit, perhaps? Or some of your slower infantry? Yeah, definitely good. So keep that in mind as well. Alright, so one last little bit of recruiting we need to do, but this is going to take us a few places. So the first place we're going to head is actually over to Sable. Oh, your highness. Sorry about all the fuss around here. A thief appears to have broken in last night. As for what he took, though, well, that part's a bit odd. How so? It's very peculiar. Gold and other valuables are not kept in this building, you see. But for some reason, the thief made off with our family tree. Yet we've only belonged to the aristocracy since my grandfather's generation, so it has no value. That is strange indeed. Are there any witnesses? In these tumultuous times, we've posted guards on watch at night. They didn't see so much as a shadow. And this appears to be the only home in town that was broken into. We've got to figure out the identity of this crook. Who knows when or where he'll strike next? That is a good question. And for that question, well, we need to consult... Well, pretty much the ultimate detective. So I'll see you guys at HQ to pick up Oboro and Shigur. Hello, fine feathered fellers. Hello, Prince. What seems to be the matter? What's that? An unknown thief broke into Lord Rawbell's mansion? Well, that sounds like detective business. Why don't you tell me all about it? Ah, 
Ah, yes. This has got to be the work of the infamous crow. You mean Brandon Lee? Wait, wrong crow. Crow is the nickname of a mysterious thief. Let's see, no witnesses, an aristocratic target, and nothing stolen except for a family tree. That's Crow's modus operandi, all right. Detective Aboro has caught Crow before, quite recently, in fact. Unfortunately, Crow escaped, and he's been laying low ever since. Until now, that is. Prince, what do you want to do about it? Should we try to nab him again? Absolutely! Good. I've been itching to get another crack at Crow ever since he escaped. First, we'll need some bait. Maybe someone in this castle has a family tree. Shigur, go with the prince and search for some bait. What? Why me? Man, what a pain. Shigur, do your job! Okay, already. Damn. No need to get all testy on me, lady. Alright, so we gotta put Shigur somewhere, so guess what, Bergen? Yeah, you, uh, you kind of get the boot. Okay, so, the question then, of course, is who, pray tell, would have a family tree on them? And then, of course, the corollary question is, who in this castle is nobility? Well, we've got a pretty obvious target just upstairs, so let's see if Lucerina can help us out. If we can get to her. What? A family tree? Sorry, Your Highness, it's back at my parents' home in Rainwall. Okay, can you help us any more? Incidentally, the person that we actually need to look for is the other noble in this castle. And if you happen to remember at the very beginning of the game, we learned that Egbert is of the House of Ethelbald, which was a noble family, although Lord Godwin disposed him, or deposed him of it disposed of it, I guess, when they took over Stormfist. So, we actually have to talk to Egbert. But in order to do so, we gotta kick him out of the party. <laughs> because otherwise, he won't talk to us. So, let's head over. Unfortunately, we've actually gotta run this. But let's head over to the inn and see if we can hopefully have ourselves a nice chat with Egbert. Well, as much as a nice chat with Egbert can happen, I mean... It's, it, it's basically on the category of Lou in regards to the, uh, the eccentricity of the conversation, shall we say. What? A family tree? Why, of course, of course! Fully 100 generations of Ethelbald's fully documented right here! Go ahead, have a look! But what do you need this for? To catch a thief of aristocratic histories? Of course! I insist! Alright, so we got ourselves a nice little family tree. That's nice. Okay, so... Now that we've done that, we've got to go back to Oboro and talk to him. So it's a little bit of running around, and I'm not cutting it because it's not very much running around, to be honest. But still, it's a bit of running around. But it's worth it because, well, hopefully we can catch this darn crow. And hang on to him this time, because, I mean, we kind of lost him before. Alright. So, let's go ahead and give this thing to a Boro and see... Well, hopefully, see if he can do something about it. Oh, did you find a family tree? Yep. Ah, excellent. Well, isn't this interesting? This family tree goes back 100 generations. Even the Queen's family tree only goes back 30. Fascinating. Might be just the bait we need to clip this crow's wings. Now, we'll ask Taylor to spread the word about our bait, and then the trap will be set. Alright, your highness. I cooked this up as fast as I could. Simple for one of my journalistic talents. So now we have a special issue of the Dawn Times, if you haven't read it before. Ethelbald Family Tree Discovered! Prince Friador recently acquired a chart of the Ethelbald Family Tree. Even though the Ethelbalds fell into ruin a hundred years ago, they are still considered one of the most prestigious families in all of Felena, as one can trace their lineage to the country's founding. The family's brilliant history is gloriously inscribed in the chart that His Highness obtained. The 
family tree is deemed priceless as both a museum piece and a historical artifact. However, a mysterious thief known only as Crow has been targeting the family trees of the aristocracy recently, so the prince has asked the detective Oboro to safeguard the precious Ethelbald chart. This Crow is nothing more than a third-rate thief, Oboro said, his lips forming a confident smile. I've caught him in the act before, and I'll do it again. Believe me, the prince has got nothing to worry about. With such an experienced detective on the case, it appears the prince can rest easy. Well, alrighty then. Good work. But I hate to use a star reporter like you for such a hack job. Ah, uh, no need to worry. Not a false word in the article, and it was fun writing it up. Next, I need to just need to spread this around a few towns. When Crow sees this, he's sure to come after Egbert's family tree. All we have to do now is sit back, relax, and wait for him to show up on our doorstep. Well, as it turns out, in order to do that, and we're not done yet, just because Shigur disappeared from our party, we actually have to go rest at Marina's Inn. If we rest in the Prince's room, it doesn't queue, I don't believe. I'd have to double check on that, but from what I can tell, it's very explicit. We have to go rest at Marina's place, which, I mean, it's no skin off my back. It just means a little bit more running around for you guys. Of course, I find it interesting we've pretty much got to go back to where all this started because we were supposed to go after Egbert, and we did, and here we are. Uh, Marina? Marina? Your Highness, about George... It's probably off some kind of mistake. Please, cheer up. Okay, if you insist. I need to cheer up with the rest. And you notice when it's sitting like that and it doesn't ask you to rest, of course it's story related. Prince, please wake up. Pardon the late hour. It looks like our bird has taken the bait. He's trapped in the storage room. Let's go say hello. Do you hear that sound? He's in here for certain. He has the raven rune, by the way. With that rune, he's completely invisible in dim light. Did I forget to mention that? Must have slipped my mind. That's why we had to trap him in this small storage room. Even though we can't see him, we should be able to find him if we grope around a bit. Okay. Let's go, before, th before this bird flies the coop. Alright, so... Let's see if we can find him. Of course, you, you notice the weird sound effects there. Oh, we got him. Hey! What in the hell do you think you're doing? Prince, you've caught him! Impossible! I'm invisible! Invisibility isn't much help in such a small space. You fell right into our trap, Crow. Damn it! Oboro! Not again! Give it up, Crow! You're caught! Stop calling me Crow! My name is Raven! Why would I be called Crow when I have the Raven rune, idiot? Whatever. A blackbird's a blackbird. Now come along quietly, Crow. You rotten little rat! The infamous raven is far too brilliant to be caught by an aristocrat's lackey! Really? By my count, this is already the second time you've been caught by this particular aristocrat's lackey. Why, you... Shut up! Let me out of here! Let me out or suffer my wrath! What do you think, Prince? Should we let him out? Only if he agrees to cooperate. What's this? You've realized what I can do for you? Well, at least you recognize talent when you see it. You've managed to capture me despite my invisibility. That impresses me. So maybe. Except I have one condition. Oporo, bow your head and beg me pretty please. Then I'll consider your silly proposal. Well, don't be shy. <laughs> oh, that's really all you want, Crow. I mean... Oh, great raven, please lend us your uncanny stealth and unmatched wits. I humbly beg of you. This actually reminds me of Jade's begging scene in Tales of the Abyss. Colonel, D 
Do you have no pride? Not enough that we get sullied by something as simple as this. What? How could you? Don't you have any shame? Oh, speaking of... Shame? No, not really. Sounds like a waste of time to me. Ah, how can you be so smug even when you're begging me? What, not enough? Should I get down on my hands and knees next, Raven? Ah, oh, forget it. What's the damn point? Well, I am a criminal of my word. I, Raven, the unmatched master thief, shall grant you my services. I assure you, you can't begin to imagine how privileged you are. Ha 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 ha! And Raven becomes a star of destiny. Awesome! Your Highness, I heard something happened last night. Did you sleep all right? Well then, have another great day. All right, so a quick word about Raven. Raven is quick, by the way. Raven is a pretty decent fighter all in all. He's kind of a lot like Roy in a sense. He's not the greatest fighter in the world, so he's not going to take the cake with Richard and Kyle and Belku and others. But one thing that definitely makes Raven worth using is, well, not just the Raven Rune, of course, but his Thief skill. The Thief skill, just like Roy's, can net you potch every time you hit an enemy. You add that to any sort of money-making party, whether it's in Lunas North or whether it is in the big hole and the environs surrounding, and you've got yourself a pretty good money-making team, all in all. So that, he's useful for that, at the very least. Alright, so before we wrap things up today, we're going to be going on to story next time, and it is going to be big. It's probably going to take more than one episode, I would expect. So I will warn you beforehand, if you're playing along with me, or you happen to be playing along with me later, I guess, make sure that you get 15 fighters and mages, including the Prince, Leon, Roy, Sile, Zarase, Kyle, and Mia Keys are all required. All seven of those are required. So find eight others aside from them. Make sure that they are at least level 40. And make sure that they have weapon skills, or have their weapons forged till probably between 8 and 12 as far as levels go. If you need to go out and make money, of course, obviously, there's a couple of good places for that. And also make sure that you've got their skills, their SP and such updated, because you will need all of them. What's coming up is going to be a pretty tough sledding, and you're going to want to be prepared for it. So that is what we're going to be doing next time on Suikoden 5. So thank you guys for joining me, and I'll see y'all later. <laughs>